If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to the Word of God again. Thank you, Brother Antron, for just taking us right into the presence of the Lord. We're in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. We're going to read verses 17 through 20. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 through 20. I'm still in a series entitled, God Use Me. Amen. Mark 16, 17 through 20. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God. Get verse number 20. It says, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. I want to use for a thought this morning, I'm gifted for God's glory. I'm gifted for God's glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We ask that you would send your anointing in this place as only you can. Instruct us, Lord. Lead us that we will follow. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm gifted for God's glory. Would you do me a favor and just type that in the comments? I'm gifted for God's glory. Some of you would be astonished at how many hurting people there are in close proximity to you. The truth is sometimes people aren't really angry. They're crying out for help. Have you ever considered that some of the people who are statistics, people who are getting divorced, people who are turning to drugs or abuse are really acting out outwardly what they feel inwardly. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but for a reality check for some of you, you have, well, all of us, we have loved ones who are hurting and need ministry. We all have family members, co-workers, neighbors, and lots, most of them, a lot of them are living in grief and depression with no apparent relief in sight. We are living in unprecedented times in our lifetime where people are hurting. And so first of all, to everyone watching this message who is in some sort of pain, some sort of agony, I want you to know that God loves you unconditionally. God loves you in spite of your mistakes. God loves you in spite of your problems. There are people who tune into this broadcast, who, who read their Bible, who go to church, who want answers. But the first thing I really want you to get is that God loves you. Would you type that in the comments for me? God loves you. He loves you just like you are, but he loves you too much to leave you like you are. God is sending you some help. I feel the Holy Ghost early. Yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost early. God will not leave you in the condition that you are in. You've been praying out, and some of you have been acting out, acting out of character, knowing that's really not you. But, but the outward signs are the desperate cry of I won't help. But I want to let you know this morning that God has heard your cry. And I prophesy that the body of Christ is about to step to the forefront 
of world events, those of us who represent Christ will begin to focus on helping hurting people, regardless of who they are, regardless of where they are, we as the body of Christ are going to start pointing people to the power of Jesus. Christianity is not just talk. Christianity is the power of God on display. That's one of the reasons why one of the main criticisms against the church is, is that the church is hypocritical, is because we talk what we don't walk. Yeah. But we are entering into the season where we are about to see the power of God on full display. Please understand that the church of the true and living God is not a color. It's not a denomination. Get this, it's not even a religion. So when I'm talking about the church, I'm not just talking about Abundant Life Ministries. This is Abundant Life Ministries. But you are going to see a shift in the body of Christ. And we are about to enter into a time where the children of God will display the love of God and the power of God to a dying world. Yeah. So it's time for the church to get busy representing Jesus. There's a, there's a scripture in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 and 19. I'm just teaching throughout this entire series. But Romans 8, 18 and 19 says, this is Paul saying, he said, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For those of you who are going through hell right now, God is getting ready to show you something. God is getting ready to reveal something in you that's going to make it all worthwhile. I think about uh, a pregnant woman, she goes through all of these changes. She, she goes, goes through emotional changes. She grow, goes through this growth and, and her hormones are off sometimes. But once she births that child, she said it was all worth it. And that's what God is telling me to tell you after everything you have been through, you're going to look back on it and say it was all worth it because God is going to reveal a glory in you. Scripture goes on to say, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. When it's saying sons of God, it means male and female, but it's saying that everything is waiting for you to show up. All of creation is waiting for the church to stand up and be the church. And this is the season where the church is about to show up. And now this is um, the mindset that I want you to develop. This is something I want you to begin to embrace this. We're entering into a new realm in the church, particularly here since I'm talking to Abundant Life Ministry. So I mean this about church attendance in person or online. This is what I want you to get. I want you to write this in your notes, get this in your mind. We enter for instructions. We exit to serve. Somebody type that in the comments for me. Enter for instructions. Exit to serve. So we're coming to church to learn. We're coming to church to get instructions but we leave the church to serve. Often, oftentimes people um, will come to me and they'll, they'll come to church and they might be a visitor, uh, a, a new member, and they say, Pastor, you, you just have to hear my testimony. Know what I want you to understand? I don't need to hear your testimony necessarily. The world needs to hear your testimony. 
And my point is, we want to get to the point where we're not just talking, but we're showing people through demonstration. We're showing people through power. So we enter for instructions. We exit to serve. So during this season of me teaching, understand I'm instructing. So it's, this is not necessarily to get your shout on. This is not necessarily to get your dance on. This is so you can be instructed and now leave to serve our community, leave to serve our neighbors, leave to serve our family and friends. And what I want you to see in this series of teaching is God is going to use you for his glory. That God is going to use you for his glory. In our text, in our text, Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. Now, the, the commentators uh, placed in here um, um, a punctuation mark, but it actually should say, it actually, should, because it says now in, it says now, these signs will follow those who believe. Then you pause and say, in my name they will cast out demons. But the truth is how it should read is these signs will follow those who believe in my name. Once you believe in the name of Jesus, then you have power to cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. What I want you to see is that Jesus was making this statement after his resurrection from the grave. But this was right before his departure from earth back to heaven. So in this context, Jesus is leaving and he's telling his disciples that it's time for them to take up his mantle and go to work. Well, somebody type in the comments, it's time to go to work. Yeah, he, 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 now get this, Jesus, the word mantle, let me talk for a moment about the word mantle, M-A-N-T-L-E, mantle. Mantle is in archaic biblical word that is rarely used anymore. But a mantle literally was a coat. It was a light coat. It was just like a little jacket. But prophetically, the mantle meant that the, the wearer of the mantle, the wearer of the coat, was covered by the power of God. It's a, it's a little cold here in Charleston, West Virginia. So I wore a coat. That coat was to protect me from the elements. That's symbolically the mantle meant that God has you protected from anything that you encounter. So a mantle was a, a symbol of the power and authority on a person's life. Let me give you an example. The prophet Elijah, um, he passed his coat to his successor, Elisha, to symbolize Elisha now had the spiritual authority that Elijah once had. The, the outward symbol of what was going on inside was Elisha now wore the coat. He now had the mantle that Elijah once wore. When Jesus, another example, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove, that was Jesus receiving the mantle from his father. Because, see, you will notice Jesus never worked a miracle until the, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended on him. That was the mantle from heaven descending on him. Once he got the mantle, that's when he went to work. So a mantle, the passing of the mantle, is sort of like running a relay race in track. And the runner 
passes the baton, one runner passes the baton to the next runner. And it's the runner that has the baton that really counts. So in this text, Jesus is passing the baton to his disciple. So Elijah passed the baton to Elisha. And I, I'm wondering here, how come once Elijah passed the baton to Elisha, how come Elisha didn't have anybody to pass the baton to? Elijah passed it to Elisha. Well, Elisha, who are you going to pass it to? And we don't have in the Bible a successor to Elisha. But the truth is there was supposed to be a successor. The successor to Elisha was a man by the name of Gehazi. And if you will do me a favor, when I get on the gifts of the Spirit, I will talk about Gehazi. Will somebody make it a point to remind me to talk about Gehazi? But the reason Gehazi is not listed as a successor to Elisha is because Gehazi got his focus on money. And you can't really be used by God if your focus is money. Again, you remind me, we'll dig into Gehazi later on. But you can't be used by God if your focus is on fame. You can only be used by God when you realize your gift is for the glory of God, not for the glory of you. So when you see people who want to be seen, that's a sign you're not ready yet. When you see people who, who they, they want, all they focus on is money. They're not ready yet. Glory to God. So in our text, Jesus is passing the mantle to the next generation of leaders. And there is a point in ministry where we go from being led to being leaders. Where we go, where we transition from being fed to being feeders. The, the parallel is when a, a family eats dinner together. And let's just say this particular family has small children. Everyone in the family has to eat. But the parents' perspective is different about the food than the children's perspective. The parents, their perspective is different when they come to the dinner table because the parents had to work to get the money for the food. Then they had to go to the store and purchase the food. Then they had to come home and, and cook and prepare the food. And so they did all of this work before they sat down to eat. And all the children has to do is come to the table and eat the food. So the, the same, everybody's at the same table, but the perspectives, perspective is different. Both the children and the parents are eating at the same table, the same food, but they look at it differently. So what most parents do is they transition the children as they begin to grow, and they start giving the children responsibilities. They teach the children how to set the table how to clear the table. And later on, they teach the children how to wash the dishes. And as the children grow, the children can do everything now that their parents once did. Yeah, I, I, I have a, a teenage daughter, and I told her I refuse to wash dishes as long as I have a teenager in the house. Yeah, and when I was, you know, I'm of the age now, I remember when the microwave first came out and when new and modern appliances were just being introduced. And uh, there was a time when I was growing up that people were buying dishwashing machines. And I told my dad, I said, we need to get a dishwasher. He looked at me like I was crazy and said, I already have one.
So, so in this text, Jesus is telling his disciples it's time for them to take over spiritually feeding the people. It's time for them to come out of mentorship into mentoring. And I believe that's the message that God is saying to this church. That's the message that God is giving to the body of Christ. It's time for you to come out of sitting on the sidelines. It's time for you just showing up at the spiritual dinner table and just eating like a little child and then, and then leaving. So, again, we enter to be instructed, but we leave to serve. Amen. Thank God for your ability to prophesy. And we're going we're gonna to touch on that in this series. But understand your prophecy is not just for the house. Your prophecy is for the club. Thank God for your uh, uh, ability to have a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. But I want to instruct you. I want to get you to, to the point that your mindset is, don't worry about preaching in the church. There's a street corner that you can preach on. Yeah, so it's time for you to start using the gift that God gave you. Jesus is telling them it's time for them to minister to all the people who never had a chance to meet Jesus so those people can know Jesus is real. The disciples had been around Jesus for three and a half years. They've seen Jesus work miracles. They've seen Jesus walk on the water. They've seen Jesus open blinded eyes, but Jesus is saying, it's your turn. And I came to tell someone that's watching this message, it's your turn. Do me a favor and type in the comments, it's my turn. When we was growing up, we used to play tag and say, tag, we touch them and say, tag, you're it. Well, Jesus is telling the disciples, tag, you're it. Jesus is telling them, it's time to minister to all the doubters and skeptics who refuse to believe that Jesus ever existed. Don't you know there are some people, they don't know that if Jesus is real or not because all the church is doing is talking. They don't know if Jesus is real or not because they have not had a real encounter with Jesus. And so the time is where they have to have an encounter with the body of Christ. And Jesus said that when you encounter them, sure, you tell them what I did, but Jesus said you have to authenticate it. You have to back it up with some signs. Glory to God. Yeah, he's, I'm, I'm trying not to get happy. Let me calm down here. So what Jesus is telling his disciples is very consistent what he has said on several different occasions in several different scenarios. Yeah, one of the terms in the Bible for Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they are called the synoptic gospels. The synoptic gospels mean they tell the same story, but they tell it from a different perspective. They're looking at the same thing but they're looking from a different angle, just like the parent and the child look at the food from a different angle. Well, that's what the Gospels are, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're synoptic Gospels because they say the same thing from a different angle. Well, Jesus giving this charge to his disciples that it's time for them to start uh, casting out demons. It's, it's time for them to start laying hands on sick people and the sick people will recover. And he said this right before he went to heaven. Well, that same story is told from a different um, perspective. Let's look at our text from a different per perspective. Let's look at it in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Ephesians 4, 7 and 8 says, but to each one of us, each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. He's saying everyone that's saved, everyone that is a believer, God has given you something. Everybody that God saves, he gives them a gift, and he gives you a gift that you can handle. 
Verse number 8. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Notice, when he ascended on high, just like in Mark, right before he ascended to heaven, he gave gifts to men. Now, this particular scripture um, is talking about the fivefold ministry. That's what synoptic is about it. They talk about the gifts and then begin to talk about the fivefold ministry where Mark looked at the same thing, but Mark focused on individual ministries. That's what I'm focusing on in this series. I'm focusing on individual ministries because God gave something to each believer. Everybody that is a believer in Jesus Christ, God has given you something to contribute to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. I said everybody has something to um, con contribute. Will someone type in the comments, I have been gifted for God's glory? Yeah, so what Mark said and what Paul said was very consistent with what Jesus taught. Jesus had been teaching this the whole time. Just like I'm saying what the parents do, they start the children off. You don't start a four-year-old or a five-year-old out with going to the grocery store. But you teach them how to put the forks in place. And you, you teach them this fork goes here, the outside fork goes here, the salad fork goes here. You, you give them those little rules, and this is how you clean the table. So the whole time, Jesus had been preparing them for his ultimate departure. And one of those times that we see Jesus teaching them this principle is in John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse number 12. John chapter 14, verse number 12. Now understand that John chapter 14, just in case you didn't know, John chapter 14 is the... the the chapter that people read at funerals. Again, because Jesus is talking about his departure. So John, so this is when Jesus tell, tell, is telling them that I'm going away to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also, in my Father's house, or many mansions. This, this is that chapter right here. So again, he's, he's talking about, um, but leaving, but in this context, in that context of him leaving, even though he's preparing them, Jesus makes one of the most radical statements that you will ever see him make. John 14 and 12, he says, Most assuredly I say to you that he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also greater works than these because... I go to my Father. I want you to notice Jesus is linking his leaving with us having gifts. Jesus is saying again, I, I'm getting ready to go, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm not leaving you comfortless. I'm not leaving you without help. That's where my introduction was to anyone who's going through a storm right now. God is not going to leave you hanging. That's, that's not his method. That's not his M.O. Anyone who's going through hard times right now, God is not going to leave you. And that's why I encourage you to share these messages for people who are going through storms. There are someone who's thinking about quitting. There's someone who is thinking about giving up, who don't know how they are going to make it, and you haven't stepped to the forefront yet. Sometimes you haven't stepped to the forefront because you don't know what you're supposed to do. That's why I'm going to teach this series. You don't know how you're supposed to do it. That's why I'm going to teach this series. But in the meantime, you can share this message so your relatives, so your family and friends know that God didn't leave them comfortless. Help me not get happy here. That God didn't leave them without some help. Will someone type in the comments, help is on the way. Glory to God. Yeah, help is on the way. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And by proxy, that means that he is talking to us today. He told them that the church should work miracles just like he did. Yeah, Jesus said, everything that you see me do, 
you should do it too. I'm going to give you my mantle. The mantle is the Holy Ghost. I'm going to leave, give you um, my, my, my spirit. I'm going to give you my ability. I'm getting ready to leave, but everything you've seen me do, if you believe, you can do it too. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. One of the things the Lord, the Lord uh, told me is when I was just meditating on this message, the Lord told me is go back and get your old testimony. Yeah, go, go back and get your old testimony. See, when we, when we first started this church, there were certain things that the Lord told me, and over the course of time, I allowed myself to get so caught up in what I was doing that I stopped doing what God had told me to do. And I'm talking to somebody right now. God has shown you some things. God has, has exposed you to some things. And God is telling me to tell you, go back and get your testimony. Go back and get that thing that you used to believe him for. Go back and get that thing that you used to trust him for because it's time for the church to show up. And you will notice that back in biblical times, Jesus had critics. He had people that didn't believe in him. And so don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged when you have critics. Uh, there are even people that, that want to teach that the miracle working power of Jesus was for the disciples only. And it was only for that generation. But I'm here to tell you if any generation ever needed the power of God, it's this generation right here. If anybody ever needed a miracle, it's this generation right here. So this is the time that God is going to put his power on full display. And, and, and Jesus um, said, not only will you do what I do, Jesus said you're going to do greater than what I did. Now, Jesus, I, that's why I told you it's one of the most radical statements in the Bible. He, he's talking about working miracles. He's talking about opening blind eyes by the power of God. So he told me, he told me when I was meditating on this message, he said, go back and get your old testimony. Go back and remember what I told you. And my veterans here, my veterans here, if, if, you, if you remember me saying this, just type in the comments, I remember that. But God told me years ago, I was pastoring this church, God told me, he said, there will come a time when the hospital will call the church and the doctors will say, we got a patient, that we have no cure for this patient, but we know God can do it. And we've heard about the miracles that God has been working in that ministry. God told me to dust that testimony off and bring it on back because it's that time. Yeah. This is the time when before the people go to the hospital, they will tell the ambulance, take me to the church. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I'm trying not to, to get happy. And it's all for the glory of God. Remember last week I told you that God said it's time to start believing him for something big? Huh. Huh. This, this is that time. This, this is the time to start believing God to use you. You know how, I got to get ready to close. You know how on a basketball team, on a basketball team, we know which players on the team, because we own the same team, we know which players on the team are good at doing certain things. Mm -hmm. So on a basketball team, you have a couple of players that they are really good at shooting from long distance. They're good with the three-point shot. I'm not going to talk about my jump shot. They're good um, with the three-point shot. So when you need a basket, you make sure you put the ball in their hands because that's what they're good at. On the team, you, you, you have certain players where 
they are good on defense. They can play defense, and, and they can shut the other person down. And so when, when you need a good defensive stop, you know put this player on that player because he can shut him down. You know who is on your team. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that the church has to get to the point where we know who can do what. Mm. Yeah, when someone has a demon, if I, if I was in here, I'd start prophesying right now. But when someone has a demon, but we know sister so-and-so, she's good at casting out demons. And all you got to do, if you just call sister Mary, if you, you just call sister Thelma, they are anointed to cast out demons. Glory to God. If someone has a disease, but, but we got a brother in the church, we, we got a sister in the church, and they are anointed, they just have an anointing to lay hands on sick people, and the sick people get well, then we know what to do. My assignment is, hallelujah, is to help you find out what you're supposed to do. Because normally, I'm trying to calm myself down because I got a whole lot to say, but normally... When we have people that they, they found out what they're supposed to do. See, most people live and die, and they never find out what they're supposed to do for God. So they're frustrated. They're, they're, they're dabbling in other things because they're not fulfilled. They're trying to fulfill that void. And then when we find someone that knows they are a prophet and, we, and, and they prophesy, then we actually put them on a pedestal. We uplift them because it's so rare to see someone flowing in their gifting. I came to tell you, you got a gift too. And my assignment during this season is to help you find your gift. It's to help you find what you are called to do. Because a gift, get this, a gift is a gift. <laughs> yeah, a gift is a gift. It means it's free. A gift. Is not like a medal. You know how you go to the Olympics and someone wins a gold medal. They, they win a silver medal. They, they win a bronze medal. Those are not gifts. They earned those. They, they worked for them. But a gift is not what we earn. A gift is what God gives us. And so everyone has a gift. So the person, even the person who has the gift, we don't uh, esteem them higher because God just gave it to them. The thing is, you have to find out what you do. Yeah, every believer has a gift, but very few people discover their gift. But God wants to use you for his glory and teach you how to discover and use your gift. Do y'all remember two things, two things I told you last week. I told you last week that the prayer has to be every morning, every night, God, I want to go higher in you. Every morning. That, that's got to be the prayer because you got to want to be used. You know, when, when you make um, the basketball team, the football team, you got to go to tryouts. You got you to show up. And God said, I need some people who will show up. And you show up by saying, God, I want to be used by you. When we get saved, they're saying, God, I want to be used. Glory to God. I want to be used by you. So every morning, every night, God, I want to go higher in you. The second thing I told you last week, we were talking about King Saul. And when King Saul... When he got around, remember last week, he got around a group of prophets. And the Bible says that when Saul got around those prophets, he began to prophesy. And the Bible says that he was turned into another man. Saul had never prophesied before. He didn't know the gift of prophecy was in him. But God had already equipped him. In this text, God had already gifted him to fulfill feel his assignment and even though he didn't know it mm -hmm. God had put a gift in him but the gift was stirred up hallelujah when he got around some other people with the gift 
And see, that's Timotheus. That's why I like good teaching and preaching because good teaching and preaching will stir up your gift. Good praise and worship will stir up your gift. Have you ever have you ever gotten a? Um, they have these. Um, they're not smoothies. They're like yogurt parfaits. And the yogurt parfait will have different levels on it. And on the first level, it's nuts. And on the second level, it is the yogurt. But down on the bottom, it's the fruit. And the only way you get what's down in the bottom, you got to stir it up. I'm telling you, that's what uh, this teaching is supposed to be. You got a gift, but it's down on the bottom. Yeah, you, you got a gift, but your flesh is on the outside. You, you got a gift, and then your thoughts and your mind is, is messing everything up. But the, what you come to church, you come to get good teaching, to stir up that gift, that that thing God has put on the inside of you, like Saul, it will turn you into another man. I came to prophesy and tell you there's another woman inside of you. There's another man inside of you, Timotheus. There is another musician down inside of you. You got some stuff in you that God wants to bring out. Forgive me for getting happy, but I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Uh, yeah, so, so that's what good teaching will do. It will stir, hallelujah, up what God has already placed inside of you. But your gift, you got to understand this, your gift is not just for inside the church building. Your gift is for the streets. Your gift is for the clubs. It's for the hospitals. It's for the schools. It's when you're riding on the school bus, school bus. Hallelujah. Some of these school shootings will stop when our children realize I'm 15, but I got a gift for the glory of God. I'm just a 12-year-old. I'm in middle school. But in middle school, I got a gift of the, for the glory of God because I got a mantle. I got a calling. I got a believer. Hallelujah. Some of these children that they have placed on drugs, some of these children that's taking Ritalin and taking all this stuff, I, they, some of them don't need it. They need to be, have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So everywhere you, everywhere people are hurting, that's where God wants to send his church. The scripture says they went out into the whole world. They just didn't stay in Jerusalem. They didn't stay in the church. They went into the whole world to preach the gospel. Put this in your notes. Put this in your notes. God is sending you out to be wise, not weird. God is sending us out to be wise, not weird. The Bible says he that wins souls is wise. And one of the things that I am sick of as a pastor is weird acting Christians. P people who they really, they really want to be seen. They really want... Um, the, 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 the glory to be on them. They want the spotlight to be on them, but the gift you have is for the glory of God. Someone say, I'm gifted for God's glory. Yeah, I'm gifted for God's glory. Remember when they came to arrest Jesus? P uh, Judas had to betray Jesus with a kiss because Jesus looked like everybody else. He was acting like everybody else. If that had been us, we would have been over in the corner levitating. So, so everybody know I'm different from them. If that had been us, we would have been turning the fire on and turning the fire off, you know, just, just playing with our gift just so we can show off. But God, this is not the time to show off. This is the time to point people to Jesus. And then we use our gifting, we use our power, we use the word of knowledge, we use the word of wisdom, we, we use the gift of faith, the gift of healings, the gift of miracles. We use it to point people to Jesus because I heard him say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I'm gifted for God's glory. Listen, I'm not out of message, I'm not out of time. I'm going to pick this message up. Next week, what I want you to do, if I want to pray for you, 
because I really am, along with some of, some of you, I'm really becoming more aware of how many people are hurt. I really am a, becoming aware of how many people are crying out for help. It looks like they're angry. That's just them wanting help. It looks like they're, they're, just, they're just drinking more, or popping more pills, or taking more drugs. No, they're just trying to sedate because they need help. But I do know a Savior who is the answer to your problem. And I want to point you to Jesus. So if I'm talking to you, if I'm speaking to you, before we close this message, I want to have a special prayer for you. But at this time, I want to receive our tithes and our offerings. I want to receive our tithes and our offerings because, again, our tithes and our offerings, it is a form of our worship service. And one of these Wednesday nights, I want to delve down into this. But our saying is, tithing is a debt I owe. Giving is a seed I sow. Because the Bible says the tithe belongs to God. Will someone type that in the comments for me? The tithe belongs to God. You really have to know this. The tithe belongs to God. Gehazi messed up his anointing. He messed up getting the baton passed to him because he focused on money. I hear people say, I hear people say, they say, uh, Bishop, I don't tithe because I don't have anything to give. But the truth of the matter is, you don't have anything to give because you don't tithe. You, the tithe, the Bible teaches us the tithe belongs to God. So that's not yours. That belongs to God. We have several ways that you can give. You can give online. This is our website. It's AbundantLifeWV.com. AbundantLifeWV.com. Or you can go to our cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign. Abundant Life WV. It's the dollar sign, Abundant Life WV. Or you can text any amount to 304-315-2262. 304-315-2262. For those of you who want to mail your tithes and offerings in, you can absolutely do that. You can mail your tithes and offerings to Abundant Life Ministry. 1534 Washington Street East, Charleston, West Virginia, 25311. Again, that's Abundant Life Ministries. That's what God is going to bless you with, Abundant Life. Abundant Life Ministries, 1534 Washington Street East, Charleston, West Virginia, 25311. We really do appreciate you sowing into the kingdom. But understand, tithing is not my rule. Tithing is God's rule. Tithing is in the Bible. Amen. Because the tithe belongs to God. Lastly, we're, we're closing. Thank you, Renee Crozier, for putting that information on the screen. Thank you, Leo, for putting that information on the screen. I want to pray. I want to pray for anyone who wants to give their life to the Lord. We, 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 we're, we're making sure we do not end this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because I believe for someone who is watching this broadcast, this is the day of a new beginning for you. This is a day of a fresh start for you. You can come out of whatever situation you're in, whatever bondage you're in. You can come out, but it starts with the revelation that God loves you. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you type on the screen, I want to be saved. Amen. If you are a backslider and you want to rededicate your life, just type in the screen, pray for me. Amen. We want to pray for you. I want to make sure that you're saved. But those of you watching, I want you to continue to watch this series because it's time for you, hallelujah, to go to work. It's time for you to start being used 
by God. Let's pray. Let's pray. While people are putting in their prayer requests, while people are saying, I, I want to be saved, while people are saying, I want to be rededicated, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord, let's pray our dismissal prayer. Our ministers, our elders are watching this. They will pray for you when I get home. I see Tanya Whitfield saying, pray for me. Tanya, we're going to pray for you. But when I get home, I'm going to look at all of this and make sure I take time to pray for you. Let's pray. Father, we come to you thanking you for today's message, Lord. Let this word resonate down in our spirit. Let even the people who hear it on replay, let them know you have a plan for their, for their life a purpose for their life. Everyone that shares this message, Lord, let them know that they share this message. They're preaching the gospel themselves. Every share is a soul, and we thank you, Lord, for the souls that are going to be saved just from the shares, the souls that are going to be saved just, just from the viewing of this, just from people hearing this. Hurting people are going to get help from hearing your word. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you this Wednesday night.